So I guess you guys have been waiting patiently for a long time. Let me call on stage Sundar Pichai. So welcome Sundar to IIT Kharagpur. As you can see, you don't need much of an introduction here. You're a rock star on campus. <laughs> <laughs> we have over 3,500 students here in the amphitheater and outside. Hopefully they're not too warm. Waiting to hear it from you. hot there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us, I mean, how does it feel to be back at IIT Kharagpur after 23 years? I mean, it is, uh, you know, last time I left, you know, I was making my way to the train station. I was pretty sad to be leaving college. Uh, it was an amazing four years. Uh, I haven't been back since then, so it's, uh, you know, it's extremely nostalgic. I had a chance to come and uh, go back and see the uh, hostel and the, the wing beat up west in Nehru Hall, where I, uh, where I stayed. And uh, I can see there are a few Nehruites out there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's been phenomenal to come back. Uh, it's... Did you ever years. imagine, did you ever imagine that you would be here 23 years later, sitting in an amphitheater like this in front of 3,500 students? No, you know, uh, definitely not. You know, I was, uh, you know, I think, uh, as most people here know, uh, getting into IIT is hard work. And so when I came to college, uh, you know, I was just looking to have a good time. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was a great four years. So I didn't thought that further along. Uh, but it's definitely great to be back here. Okay. We have a few pictures of yours from the time uh -uh. you were at Kharagpur. Can we have, can we play those pictures? Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? I guess that's my wingmates from uh, Beat Up West. You know, we literally didn't have cameras or phones back then, so uh, you know, it was a pretty. Uh, we have very very few photos from them. So yeah, yeah. And uh, the second photograph, please. Do you remember this? Uh, I, I, I'm not fully sure which, is it Harry's or Harry's? Harry's yeah, Harry's. there you go. It's a place where we all used to get together and eat, and so that, that's a picture from there. What was the mess food like at that time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the, one of the favorite questions, uh, you know, when the mess staff was great, but you know, when, when, I, when I used to join, you know, people would ask us to guess whether it was sambar or dal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that still the case? <laughs> God. So that was quite an experience and uh, you know, but they were great folks and I'm glad they fed us for four years. Yeah, yeah. Can we have the third picture please? So can you identify Sundar Bicha in this uh, picture? Yeah. This I is at the, see, this is at this amphitheater. Uh, yeah, I was sitting here, I was probably 25 years ago. Yeah. You wanted to ask a question. Ah, <laughs> I don't know what, what was happening at the time, so. I think we were just having Do you fun. remember the event? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we were probably here for some performance here. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, you know, you come across as this really humble, down-to-earth, nice guy. I'm sure you were a good student at Kharagpur. But I'm sure there was another side to you as well. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, there is to every idea. There is to every idea. <laughs> did, did you ever bunk classes right? Uh, the course. morning classes? I mean, of course, uh, you know. <laughs> I think I think it, I think it's a it's the rite of passage of going through college. Uh, you know, I had, uh, you know, I, I have to say I worked hard, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we did have our share of fun as well. Did you get ragged? Uh, you know, it was uh, it was pretty mellow. Uh, I definitely remember. You know, when I, when I started, uh, you know, hopefully it has gotten better by now. Uh, but, you know, we had uh, a few things. I don't know whether you still have, you know, at the time we used to have something called a CG change. I don't know whether you guys do or still do. Uh, it stands for center of gravity change. So, you know, you, as a freshman, you lock your room and you go out and you come back and the room doors aren't open, but everything inside your room has been rearranged. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> And they do it by putting sticks in and, you know, all your clothes. They rearrange even the furniture. 
So it's quite a shock when you open the when you open your room door and you walk back in to see your entire room has been uh, rearranged. So we that had must have been crazy. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Was, as a freshman, yeah, it was yeah. Uh, quite an experience. I don't think that was uh, as bad as you know maybe a couple of weeks into being here. You know, I I came from south. Uh, you know, I came from Chennai. I had learned Hindi in school, but I never spoke it much. Um, you know, just listening to how people were speaking, I just thought you address people this way. So one day there was someone in the mass, and I had to call him. I called him Abe Saleh. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's all. That's, how, that's how, you know, in my first couple of weeks, I thought you call people that way. It quite. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and uh, next thing I know, the, uh, the, the folks in the mess were quite upset, and I think they temporarily closed down the mess. Oh, wow. So wow, I wasn't wow. very popular for, uh, for that day. So. so you were responsible for the mess shutting down at IIT? Uh, just, just for a moment, yeah, just for a moment. <laughs> you met Anjali at IIT, Kharagpur? Yeah, Anjali is my wife. Huh? Yay! Yeah, she, uh, she was my classmate. Uh, you know, she lived in... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you still have, uh, I, I hope you still have SN Hall. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was the only, uh, you know, uh, girls hostel then, and I hope there are a few more now. And, uh, you know, it wasn't always easy to, if you had to go get someone at the girls hostel, you had to walk, walk in the front and request someone there to go call them. And so they would go in and loudly say, you know, Anjali Sundar is here for you. So, <laughs> so it wasn't exactly a pleasant experience, but you know. It's, Does it still work like that? You guys use technology. Uh -huh. <laughs> I guess it's moved on by now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when we were on campus, I mean, there was no Google and there was no internet. Mm -hmm. So, how have things changed? You've come here after a long time. Do you see a difference between then and now? You know, of course, you know, I come to India uh, regularly and, uh, you know, the rate that Rajan spoke about it, uh, you know, the, the, the rate at which things are progressing, at least digitally, uh, has been phenomenal. And, and you see it, uh, you see it in every way. Um, you know, of course, we didn't have phones there. You know, I remember waiting for a long time to get the first rotary phone in our home, and it was a long wait to get that. Uh, you know, didn't have access to computers growing up, uh, yeah. you know saw the first computer here for a little bit. So we had to book time at the computer center. Book time, carry floppy yeah, disks. Yeah, and, and floppy uh, disks, yeah. It's a very different world. So, you know, the, the, clearly the progress has been phenomenal. Mobile is an amazing revolution for India. You know, you have over 300 million smartphones. So you see the change, you know, palpably, you know, across everything, uh, everything I interact with. Though I have to say, walking into Nehru Hall, you know, looking at my dorm, it still looks exactly the same <laughs> as it did 25 years ago. So... So some things don't change, which is for the good, I guess. Right, right. You know, as you know, we have so many students here, and we ask them to send their questions, and we've got a, about 1,200 of them. So we've chosen a few, okay, for you to answer. So if we can move to the first student, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Samir. Can we have your question, please? Sir? Yeah, over there in that corner. Sheikh what, right? Mohammed Samir. Uh, you must have sit here, so you know how glad we all are about you. Every student is anxious about your replies, and professors are happy that a student of theirs is in such a position. I want to ask, like, every student aspires to be in a respect, respectable position. So when did you feel that you reached a checkpoint? Like, when did you feel, yeah, I'm going to change from an alumnus to a distinguished alumnus? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't get to make that decision. I think it's, uh, it's a decision by the, you know, faculty here. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I always approached it as, uh, you know, I, I look, look to do something I really like doing. You know, I would always wanted to build, build products. And, you know, in my life, getting access to computing made a big difference. And, you know, so I've always wanted to work on computing, uh, you know, build, uh, build computing products, which could reach many, many users. And so, and so, you know, and that's what I've been focused on. And so I think, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an end result of that, so. Okay. Uh, can we have another question from Chiranjeev Singh Rathor? Yeah, over there. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, sir, my question was, uh, like, we are students and uh, you, you are very humble, but there must be some crazy things you've done when you were in campus. So any of those memories? Uh, what are the craziest things you did at IIT Kharagpur? 
you mean crazier than calling somebody Abe Saleh in the German? <laughs> 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 uh, you know, I, I mean, look, I mean, I, I, you know, I think I had my share of uh, all the experiences uh, which all of you go through, uh, you know, uh, staying late in the nights and missing classes in the morning. Uh, but, you know, overall, you know, we had a very, very good group of uh, folks. I, you know, still, you know, I, you know, in a living in a campus like this, you come away from home far away for the first time. Uh, and, you know, my best memories are with my wingmates. You know, you, mm -hmm. you develop close friendships. And, uh, and uh, you know, visiting this trip in Bangalore, I got to see a few of my old uh, Karakpur classmates. Uh, so good memories. Oh, wow. So shifting gears a bit, I mean, 10 years after you left IIT, you joined Google. It was 2004 mm -hmm. uh, or 5? 2004. Four. Yeah. And 10 years later, you were running Google, the world's most innovative technology company, right? The Google products just grow on you. You know, Google Search, YouTube, Android, Maps. What is it that drives innovation at Google? You know, I, you know, I think we've always, uh, you know, we've always had an ambitious approach to it. Uh, you know, we, we call it internally as, uh, you know, 10x or moonshots. We try to work on things which, uh, you know, the criteria we think is we want to work on things which people will use every day. Mm -hmm. It will apply to billions of people, and it solves a real problem for them. So that's the bar. So anything we try to do, we, we think of it that way. And so we aim high. We try to use deep computer science to anything we approach so that we can make, uh, have a differentiated approach to solving it. And you, know, and you want to aim high enough that you fail uh, you know, a few times. I think that's the natural part of the process. Uh, in fact, you know, Larry used to say, if you aim if you work on really difficult things, you're better off because you have no competition. Others aren't working on yeah, uh, that difficult yeah. a problem. And even if you fail, you end up doing something great in the sure. process. And so I think that's the philosophy which has guided us all through these years. So you don't touch anything which is, less, which is, le which is not relevant for at least a billion users? Yeah, we, we think you know, if, if the product is successful, uh, you know, that everyone should be able to use it. It mm. applies to everyone. And you know, Maps is a good example of it. If you think about it, you know, understanding the world around you is a real human need. You know, it applies to uh, everyone. So we tend to focus on uh, those kinds of problems. And you know, that's what drives this. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah, you've been talking uh, lately a lot about machine learning and AI. You know, uh, you know, AI was talked about even 25 years ago when I was at IIT and when you were at IIT. What has changed in the last two or three years? Uh, Why has AI become suddenly, and machine learning suddenly become the new buzzword? I mean, I think the biggest advances you're seeing uh, is, is largely due to, uh, you know, two things. The techniques which we use in deep learning, uh, deep neural networks, uh, have been around for many years. But early on, you know, they weren't that effective because you just didn't have the computational power to run, uh, run these algorithms. Uh, you know, just for the past many years, uh, the computational power has dramatically increased. So when you run uh, deep learning on the latest computation, and with access to better data, you get dramatic breakthroughs. So for example, we recently launched uh, Google Translate. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is machine translation. And, and, and using our deep learning systems, the translation quality improvements just in the last year is bigger than what we've seen in the past 10 years cumulatively. Wow. Wow. So it tells us that you know, the ability for computers to do these kinds of tasks, be it image recognition, speech recognition, voice recognition, it's really hitting a tipping point. So I think you know, we are definitely in a point of inflection. And we are investing a lot as a company here. And you know, I can't wait to get these benefits to as many users as possible. I think it will really drive the next wave of computing. Excellent. You know, uh, you were in Bangalore. Uh, you met startups in Bangalore. And uh, I heard you say that uh, there's nothing really missing as far as startups in India go. They're as good as startups elsewhere in the world. But there's one thing which sort of, uh, you know, we also invest in startups and we face this problem as well ourselves as a company, that the Indian market is not large enough to invest a lot in technology. So, you know, so how do you, in a situation like this, compete with MNCs, which have large investments in technology? No, I think it's a good question. Uh, I think part of the problem is uh, in India, you know, the, the potential is there and the market is developing. I think it'll take a few more years for it to fully realize the potential. You know, for all its potential, we get excited about smartphones, but we are talking a, a number of 300 million in a country of 1.3 billion people. Yeah. And, and, and not all of them have good connectivity as well. 
So I think the market, the digital market is still developing. And so that's the problem you run into. And yeah. so as companies getting built here, it's difficult to scale across India and reach that full potential, which gives you the resources to go compete internationally. But I think it's just a moment in time. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, hopefully Indian companies are more thoughtful about, you know, when they build stuff, also targeting similar areas like Vietnam and Indonesia and Thailand. I think those markets are developed and, you know, and the same products would, would work in those markets as well. So I think they need to set their sights a bit bigger. Uh, but it's a good question. Uh, but I think the trend lines are strongly in the favor. I think every year I can see the, uh, the rate yeah. at which things are changing. Yeah. So in about three to four years, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, I'm pretty convinced, at least in a five to ten year time frame, that there will be big global uh, you know, software companies coming out of India and we will be very used to it. So when these guys graduate and when they want to build the next Google, they should build for the international market as well and not just for the Indian market? Yeah, I, mean, I, would, I would aim big and you know, I definitely think you can build from India and, and we, we see that at Google, increasingly there are things which we think about building for the Indian market but we, which we think will apply globally. Yeah, yeah. So we are, we are here sitting at IIT Kharagpur and you know, technology as we know is disrupting anything, everything. It's disrupting education as well, right? Elementary education, even higher education. Today you're gonna, you can get access to the best courses offered by the best universities in the world online, right? Mm -hmm. At the, it's, you, know, you can get access to courses from Stanford, MIT, everywhere on your desktop, yeah. right? So in a situation, and there are 5,000 engineering colleges in India and many other institutions. So what is your, sitting where you are, I mean, what would you recommend to them? How should they be looking at education? How should they be, they be thinking about education going forward? You know, I think, you know, it's, it's, you know, one of the great things about India is this tremendous interest in education. You know, people talk about it all the time. You know, most parents aspire for this for their uh, children. And so I think it's a great foundation we have as a country. I think education needs to evolve and, and change just like with everything else. Uh, you know, in my experience growing up here, I think there's a lot of emphasis on, you know, spending time on the books and, you know, learning yeah. things academically. Yeah. I think, you know, working the real world, I would say, you know, it is important to be well-rounded. It's important to, uh, you know, try different things, I, uh, you know, take some risks. Uh, you know, I would encourage people to, uh, you know, follow their passions a little bit more. I think one of the, you know, for, for all the great things about the Indian educational system, I think there's a lot of pressure to follow set lanes uh, throughout your uh, career. You know, you're in high school, you're thinking about college. You know, I get very surprised people come to IITs and immediately they are thinking about IAMs and so on. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. think, I think it's important to get real world experience. And if you take uh, the US, for example, at a place like Stanford, most students don't choose their majors till their uh, you know, final year. So people explore different things and, and find what they're really passionate about. So I think those are all you know, good things to aspire to. Uh, I think you know, I would like to see uh, people, you know, people value creativity, value experience of doing things, uh, taking risks. And, uh, you know, um, academics is important, but it is not as important as yeah, it's also yeah. made, made out to be. So you would want people to, and, you know, institutes to focus a lot more on experiential learning, project work, internships, stuff like that, to get real life experience. Yeah, I, th I think know. that matters a lot. That matters I think a lot. people should be encouraged to take risks a little bit more and, and try different things till yeah. they find what yeah. they like doing. Yeah. Yeah, and things have changed. It's okay to fail even in India now. Oh, I, I absolutely think. You know, look, it's remarkable to be at uh, IIT. Uh, there are many, many great people who don't make it in, and you will see this later in life. People do well from all walks of life. Uh, I think it's important to remember, uh, you know, uh, getting into an elite institution doesn't guarantee success. Mm -hmm. uh, it matters a lot, but it doesn't guarantee success. And, uh, you know, I think, I think that's, it's important to keep that perspective in life. And, uh, you know, yeah. life is a long road. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so you want to you wanna take it at the right pace and enjoy what you're doing. You know, I just met a, I interviewed a guy recently for our company. And he was all of 26, 27 years old. And he had done a startup after graduating. And uh, he was very excited and he wanted to do new, new things. So I asked him, what happened? I mean, why did you give up on the startup? You've already done one or two things and you want to try a third thing. He said, I saw these friends of mine who graduated with me, they're doing such exciting stuff overseas and in India, that I went through a quarter life crisis. <laughs> and so I want to do new things. There's so much happening outside. There's so much opportunity today that there is no end to what you can do. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it's great. I think yeah. definitely a lot more options. I mean, it doesn't need to be even in engineering. I, th I, th I think it's important to remember 
Uh, there are many, many different ways uh, you, know, you can approach things. And what matters most is you know, loving what you're doing and, uh, and trying to do well at it. So. Sure. So tell me, uh, I'm sure there are lots of great technologies at Google, and you've, you're a great technologist yourself. But what is Sundar Pichai like as a leader? You know, I think... What uh, is your leadership style? You know, when you're, when you're trying to run something uh, at the scale of Google, uh, you know, we have now over 60,000 people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, you rely on other strong leaders. I think, you know, a lot of what I do is, you know, I have an outstanding leadership team. You know, it's learning to let go and really empowering people, uh, you know, at all levels of the organization. And, you know, trusting them to do, doing the right thing. And as a leader, a lot of your job is to make those people successful. Uh, it's le less, less about trying to be successful and more about making sure you have good people and your, your work is to remove ba barriers, remove roadblocks for them uh, so that they can be successful in what they do. And so that's how I've always thought about it. And I've also valued uh, you know, teamwork quite a bit. And you know, I think it's really important uh, to build organ organizations where people actually want to work together. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything comes out of that. So setting up collaborative uh, cultures is another big, big thing I try to focus on. So it's not about one person, it's about the team. That's right. Yeah. And if your team succeeds, you also succeed with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Abs great. So let's get, let's get some questions from the students. Uh, Arundhati Banerjee. Uh, Google is having an impact all over the world. Oh. And as you mentioned, you use uh, principles of computer science in most of your products. So we would like to know what is the next big thing going to be in R&D at Google? Uh, you know, I think it's a good question. Uh, you know, I'd probably be, I can't quite tell it exactly. Uh, but, you know, I would say, you know, I spoke about machine learning and AI. You know, we are making a big bet on that. You know, advances in machine learning, I think, will make a big difference in many, many fields. Uh, you know, we recently published a paper on, you know, using machine learning uh, to help diagnose uh, diabetic retinopathy. It's a condition which causes blindness. But if you can detect it earlier, you can completely cure it. Otherwise, it causes blindness. It's the fastest growing cause of blindness in the world. You know, today, you need advanced ophthalmologists to detect these conditions. But using machine learning, we can detect it pretty accurately so that a, a, a regular doctor can detect these conditions. I'm saying this is an early example of the kind of changes that will happen when you apply machine learning to all kinds of fields. You know, Google alone won't do this. But you know, to me, I'm, the thing I'm most excited about is bringing advances from machine learning and AI to as many people in as many fields as possible. Yeah. Uh, can we take one more question from Nishchal uh, Kutarekar? Uh, hi, Sundar. OK, here he is. <coughs> hey, hi. Oh, hey. Right. My question is, uh, how much power you have as a CEO of Google? Can you change the Google Doodle to ITKGP building for a day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send a message to the team. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> before you get too excited, I mean, the good news is Google is set up in a way. Uh, I think even if I send that email, they wouldn't do it. And here's the reason why. You know, I think we have, you know, we, we build an organization with strong ideals and values on when we show doodles for what occasions. And uh, it's less about what I want to happen as much as, you know, we have a set of rules to go by. Uh, but, you know, uh, I mean, uh, KGP definitely deserves celebration and, you know, look forward to doing it in the most uh, thoughtful way possible. No, we are a client of Google. Can you put us on the homepage of Google? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's why we are thoughtful about these things. <laughs> Great. So, okay. Uh, can we go to Sankalp, please? Oh, Sankalp ah. is here right behind us. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. What is the role of Google in the digitization of India? Uh, you know, I think you know, it's very much with our uh, you know, core to our mission statement. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, we really try hard to build products that work for everyone in the world. Uh, search works that way. You know? and, and so you know, when we look at India, the, the main areas where we have really focused on is uh, a few things. You know, to really make a difference in India, you need to get Google working in as many languages as possible. You know, English is only spoken by a, a small segment of the overall population. So just getting Google to work in other languages is a big focus. We've made progress. 
uh, today in Android with search. You know, we support uh, you know, many languages, but we want to do all that better so that it works even in rural uh, situations with the right dialects and so on. The second is improving, you know, getting access for people. So you know, I would love to see cheaper smartphones, entry-level smartphones. I think to really, you know, we, we need to bring the price, prices down even more maybe at a $30 US level uh, for India for uh, entry-level smartphones. And connectivity is extraordinarily important. Uh, this is why uh, you know, we've been working on the Wi-Fi project. You know, we have connected 100 uh, railway stations. I heard the Karakpur railway station has Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, the <laughs> though, though my memories of Karakpur railway station, you, you asked about ragging, I was made to carry luggages uh, for incoming, <laughs> uh, incoming seniors. It's a long platform. Uh, you know. But you know, we are focused on bringing connectivity too, and we do programs like uh, you know, Internet Sati where we are uh, training rural Indian women uh, you know, on using the internet. Still, you know, there's a massive gender gap in, uh, between women and men in terms of using the internet, especially in rural areas. So we are targeting a lot of these programs. You know, yesterday I talked a lot about bringing small medium businesses, the local merchants online, which will make a big difference as well. So are you working very closely with the government also on the Startup India initiative? I mean, you know, one of the exciting things I found about India is you can actually do uh, very effective public-private partnerships. Yeah. You know, that model doesn't always exist in uh, every country we, go, we work with. Uh, but I think you know, we are uh, big supporters of the Digital India program, and, uh, and you know, we've done very successful partnerships. Uh, the Railways Project, uh, this is in partnership between Google and Railtel, and that's why we've been able to bring Wi-Fi access to many, many places. And you know, we are always looking to partner. If you look at Aadhaar and UPI and how you know, we partner with the NPCI, uh, and you know, we are working on digitizing payments. Uh, and so we, we tend to form these public-private partnerships, and I think they, they work very well. Yeah, great. So you know, uh, when do you think India will catch up with China on the digital front? Forget about everything else. You know, I, I, you know, I, I think the goal should be a bit different. Uh, I think I'm absolutely, you know, with uh, you know, full certainty, convinced that India will be a global player in the digital economy, and it'll be competitive with any country in the world. Uh, so. I've always felt that, and I think you have all the foundations. When I, you know, I've said this before, when I interact with uh, startups in India, I find them world class in terms of how they approach things, the entrepreneurs I run into, their, how they build products, and so I'm absolutely confident of it. I think there is a timing issue, but I think you know, we are growing well as a country. I, I, I think we need to stay at it, continue doing all these things, and it will take a few more years, and we'll get there. So you know, for a lot of the students here, you are their role model. They idolize you, right? A lot of them would give a lot to be in your shoes. So, you know, I'm sure growing up, you had to work hard in school. You prepared for IIT, then you got into IIT. You spent four years here. You went overseas. A lot of people in IIT dream of going overseas for an education. So what are some of the tips that you would like to share with students out here? Oh, you know, I, I, I think I kind of answered it uh, earlier. Um, you know, I would, you know, I would really encourage people to, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure in today's system. Uh, you know, I, I, I get surprised people start preparing for IIT in their eighth grades, and you know, <laughs> that's that's a bit shocking to me. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, I I hope, you know, I hope, uh, you know. You know, as people are approaching things, they are really taking the time to doing things. You know, in a deeper way. You know, understanding things deeper, uh, learning by doing things. And uh, you know, I think it's important to remember it's a long road. Setbacks actually don't matter. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times when I was younger, you know, people would say, you know, this person didn't get into this college or something, and that's the end of the road. I mean, life is so different from that. And so I think it's important to, you know. Uh, keep your hopes, keep your, keep your dreams, and try to follow them. And you know, I think, I think most of how life plays out is up to you, not up to, uh, up to what happens uh, outside of you. And I think it's important to keep that in mind and take the long-term view. So you can still, you can get a lot of C's at IIT and still make it big in life? Uh, you can get a lot of C grades at IIT and still make it big? I, I, mean, I don't know what the grading system now is like, but 
Uh, I think you have to ask uh, Professor PPC on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, for what it's worth, I, did, uh, I, th I do think I've gotten a C at IIT. So. And it's okay if you're not in IIT also. You can uh, still make it big. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think uh, there are, you know, I think there are several successful people at Google uh, who have come from all over the world, including in India, from other institutions as well. Uh, I think there are world-class institutions outside too. Uh, definitely IITs are the premier. I mean, they, they are respected not just in India, but globally. Uh, you know, but I, I think there are many paths to success for sure. Yeah, so, you know, the done thing when we were sort of at IIT, uh, and if you wanted to pursue a career in high tech, you went abroad. Because there weren't too many options in India. There weren't too many things you could do in India. Do you think that has changed? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I spend every, every year I come, I travel to Bangalore and Delhi and I meet startups. There are many, many entrepreneurs who have just, you know, gone to schools in India and decided to start up companies right here and, and they're doing very, very well. And we, even at Google, we are able to recruit, uh, you know, some of the best and talented people uh, straight, straight into Google in India. And so I think things have definitely changed, uh, you know, if, especially if you take a look at the next, for me, when I look at how much things have changed, and you know, things change a lot in a 20 year time frame, right? Yeah. You know, I, you know when, I, when I left for the US, that was the first time I actually got on a plane, right? I, you know, so going to the US was the first time I got on a plane. You know, this week I met with uh, you know, the CEO of Indigo and he was saying, you know, roughly 100 million people fly in India every year. And you, wow. know, you look at how the market yeah. has changed. Yeah. And so things changed remarkably in 20 years. So if you keep that perspective in mind, I think India is a great place to be looking ahead at the next 20 years. Yeah, I mean, for the first time, I'm seeing actually two-way flow in yeah. terms of traffic. There are people Absolutely. coming back and there are people going overseas Absolutely. as well. Yeah. Great. Uh, I think we'll take a few questions now. Uh, can we go to Abhigna Reboru? Reboru? Yeah, on that side. My question is, uh, like Mr. Hitesh said, you are in a position many of us aspire to be in. So, say 10, 15 years ago, where did you think you would be here today? And uh, 10 years from now, where do you see yourself in the future? <laughs> uh, you, know, t you know, 10 year shifts are really big. Uh, you know, I, just, so, just so you understand, in the 80s, mid 80s, you know, personal computers came into being. 10 years later, the internet came into play. 10 years later, smartphones came into play. So in 10 years, things shift around so much. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what I'll be doing in 10 years, but you know, the thing which still keeps me going is the desire to build products which will be used by uh, you know, billions of users and makes a difference for them. Hopefully, I'm, uh, I still have a chance to do that 10 years from now. Yeah, great. Uh, Naman Gupta, can we take a question from Naman Gupta, please? Hi, Sundar. Uh, what's your advice for a student of mathematics like me who is not studying core computer science? How can I get a job at Google? How can we, how can we work at the dream company Google? So how, how many people here want to work for Google? Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> we, uh, maybe we should open a campus in Kharagpur. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, you know, the good news I would have for you is, uh, you know, mathematics is foundational. Uh, you know, earlier I talked about machine learning. If you look at what machine learning is, a lot of it is just, you know, most of the uh, to do real improvements in machine learning algorithms, it's all mathematics. In fact, I think it's easier to train a good mathematician, uh, you, know, tra you know, train them on the computer science needed to become a machine learning expert than the other way about. So, you know, I, I actually think you're on a good path, so keep doing it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have a question from Shaurya Kumar, who could not be here today. Can you tell us what you remember from your job interview at Google way back in 2004? <laughs> you know, I interviewed, uh, I interviewed at Google on uh, April 1st, 2004, which is April Fool's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Google had just announced Gmail, and, uh, you know, it was invite only. And so, you know, but people weren't exactly sure whether it was an April Fool's joke. And, you know, so I remember doing my interviews during the day and people kept asking me, what do you think of Gmail? But, you know, I hadn't had a chance to use it. I thought they were, uh, you know, it was an April Fool's joke. Uh, so my first three interviews, I couldn't answer it well because I didn't use the product. It was only in the fourth interview when someone asked me, have you seen Gmail? I said no. <laughs> and so he actually showed it to me. And then the fifth interviewer asked, 
what do you think of Gmail? And I was able to start answering it then. So the final four interviews, I actually told them about what, you know, what I think of Gmail and how to improve Gmail. And uh, that's, that's my interview experience like. Somebody in the middle also took me to have ice cream in the middle, which showed me Google was a very, very different place as well. So that was how my interview process went. But is it true that everyone at that time was interviewed by Larry Page as well? You know, I was one of the first people, I think, you know, I joined Google when we were over 1,000 people. And Larry, just at that point, was the first time he had stopped interviewing people. Oh. So I still joke around that I got into Google because Larry didn't interview me. So. <laughs> Great. Uh, can we have a question from Bina Kumari? Hi, Sundar. Uh, my yeah. question for you is, having a major in metallurgical engineering, how did you end up or follow your passion for computer science? Uh, you know, it's a part which I was uh, you know, telling, you know, it's a, it's a long road. You know, I always enjoyed programming. Uh, you know, I still remember learning Fortran, uh, you know, for, for those of you who, who know that language, uh, you know, at, uh, at, at, at KGP here. Uh, and, you know, I always enjoyed programming, so I did that on the side, and, you know, that, that became uh, something which I pursued, uh, you know, because I really enjoyed doing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we have a question from Ashish Dham Dhiman, please? Ashish Dhiman, okay, there at the back. Hello, sir. Uh, my question to you is, uh, during your stay in uh, KGP or Stanford, did you ever get that feeling of future insecurity? Like, uh, will I be able to make it, uh, will I be able to stand out and make a place of my own? Uh, basically, will I get a job? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or, uh, uh, what did you do to cope up then? Uh, you know, look, I mean, this is, it's, you know, when you work with really good people, what you just described is a, you know, it's a natural feeling to have. You know, there, there are definitely at times, I've worked with amazing people at Google. I've been in a room where I felt, you know, look, I mean, these people are better than me at what, you know, what they're doing. And, you know, in fact, at Google, we talk about this for many, many new people. Sometimes they come into Google, and we, we have a phrase for this. We call this the imposter syndrome. People commonly say, well, I don't belong here because, you know, people around me seem, uh, very, very good, and I think any any elite institution. I'm sure it's true at IIT here. Uh, you know, you're always surrounded by very good people, and I think there are moments when you feel what you just described. Yeah. I think it's natural. If anything, I would say you almost always want to feel that all through your life because that means you're working with people who are very, very good, and uh, you know, and that's really important. So you always, if you feel very comfortable in what you're doing, uh, you know, I don't think you're pushing yourself enough, and so I think it's. You always want to strive to be in environments where you feel the people around you are a little bit better than you are. Thanks. Uh, is Sommama uh, Paul here? Yeah, okay. Hello, sir. Sir, my question was, uh, being a first-year student, this question has always troubled me that uh, how can we make the most of the four or year, five years uh, we spend in the campus because there are so many activities and avenues we can actually engage ourselves in? Um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, I remember having a lot of free time, at least when I was at IIT. <laughs> uh, I guess things have changed. Uh, you know, but, you know, uh, you know I, wouldn't, I wouldn't overthink it. You know, I, you know, the way I would answer these things is I would do what feels something like you like spending time on, and you know, I would use that as a yardstick and not feel the pressure to do, uh, to do what others are telling you to do, right? And so I think at least you know, my, my solution, the way I dealt with these things was try and uh, feel what I really enjoy doing and pursue that. So hopefully, hopefully that's the way to do it. Thanks. You know, the IITs are great at imparting technical skills to students, uh, but when you go outside, you know, you need some soft skills as well. So, I mean, and, and I remember during my time at IIT, you know, we had to do a few courses in humanities as well to graduate. Yeah. But they were sort of looked down upon in some sense. Like, like you know, this is not the hardcore macho stuff. So what, what, what is your feeling? I mean, what do you think? Should students be developing themselves holistically? Should they be spending on stuff, time on stuff, outside the core technical stuff to uh, get a wider perspective? Uh, I think so. I, I think it's good. You know, I, I regret not having done it more uh, when I was here. But, you know, when you look at the cultural festivals which happen at IITs, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not sure whether you still do the DIA festival 
uh, during Diwali and, uh, you know, yeah, and so things like that are great to get involved in. Yeah. I think anything like that, I mean, doing more things and just getting a more well-rounded experience, I think actually makes a real difference. And to your point around even courses in humanities, writing is an important skill in life, you know, spending time learning how to write better, you know, all those things end up mattering. Great. Uh, we'll now move on to what is called a rapid fire round. Ah. Have you seen Coffee with Karan ever? Ah, uh, here and there, on YouTube. Okay. Well, uh, we won't put you in the hot speed. We'll put you in the hot speed, but we, we want to ask you very tough questions. Okay, right? great. Thank you. Okay, but in the interest of time, these, many of these questions are from students, but I'll sort of take them. So the first one is from Vishal Sharma. Uh, how do you spend your free time? Free time? Do you have free time? Uh, <laughs> definitely. You know, I have, I have young kids, so I try to spend it, uh, spend it with them. Uh, I love watching cricket and soccer. Uh, if I get a chance, I do that too. So I uh, try to stay in touch with friends and family. How, how old are the kids? Uh, 13 and 9. 13 and 9. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this one is a tricky one from Amol Sakhle. What was your GPA at IIT? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, w I would say, uh, I'd, you know, too <laughs> embarrassed to admit it after my first year. Uh, but really good the next three years to make up for it. So that's how I would say. So there's hope. <laughs> Year one students, if your GPA is low, there's still hope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one is from Surajit Mura Singh. Who was your idol during your B.Tech days? Uh, you know, many, you know, I, uh, you know, I, w I would say many, many people, uh, you know, I admired people from all walks of life. Uh, you know, this week I met Mr. Narayana Murthy, uh, had a chance to have uh, breakfast with them. Uh, admired people like that who put India really on the map uh, globally. Uh, you know, I love watching cricket, uh, love watching Tendulkar play. Uh, Tendulkar started playing when I joined IIT, so, you know, so things like that. Uh, the next one is from me. Okay, the next one is from me. Who's your favorite Bollywood actress? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, uh, you, know, at, uh, you know, at Google, uh, you know, I had a chance to host and uh, interview uh, Deepika Padukone and Shah Rukh Khan. And, uh, oh. <laughs> so maybe Deepika Padukone. I used to wa I enjoy watching Prakash Padukone play badminton as well, so oh. combination of the two. And who was your favorite actress when you were growing up? Oh, uh, you know, I favorite actors? Actress. Actress growing up. <laughs> there were many. Uh, <laughs> 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 I Do you have a poster in your room? Uh, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to comment on posters and <laughs> what happens in college dorm stays there, right? So. Great. Okay, this one is from Ankit Kumar. Who was your favorite professor at IIT Kharagpur? You know, uh, there were quite a few, I think, uh, you know, Professor uh, Roy from my department, uh, Professor Indran Ilmanna, who is now at IIT Kanpur, uh, you know, they were uh, two of my favorite professors, so. Yeah, great. This one is from Gaurav Malik. Do you still get calls from your college friends? Uh, you know, I do. Uh, you know, today it's much easier to stay in touch through many different ways, but, uh, you know, I definitely, as I said, you know, a few of us uh, met up in Bangalore, and so it was good to meet with a few, few friends from KGP. I'm in Bangalore, so I still Do you have a, a group which, which you are on with all these friends of yeah, yours? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we follow them on Facebook, WhatsApp, everything, just like everyone else does. Hey, okay, great, great. And this one is from Fahad Shaheen. How can I replace you at Google? <laughs> <laughs> I would tell him, be careful what you wish for. Uh, <laughs> but happy to discuss this with them over a cup of chai, so. <laughs> right, right. And of course, you know, you've been, uh, I heard you say that Gavaskar was your favorite cricketer when you were growing up and listen to, you used to listen to the commentary on radio, you know, India versus West Indies, yeah. Gavaskar used to score hundreds yeah. uh, in the Windies against those fast bowlers. And of course, you mentioned Tendulkar as well, right? But who's your favorite cricketer today? Do you yeah. follow cricket? I mean, uh, yeah, I, you know, I follow cricket, uh, you know, and uh, I don't get as much time as I used to, but they keep making the game shorter and shorter, <laughs> so uh, it gets uh, it gets easier to follow. I definitely follow cricket. Uh, you know, like like with everyone here, I think watching Kohli through the last year has been yeah. incredible. So. 
you know, I, I, I didn't think somebody could have an average above 50 in all forms of the game, test cricket, uh, one days and T20, so it's been phenomenal to see. And were you a cricketer yourself? Did you play while uh, you were at... No, not very good. You know, I, I couldn't even make it to the KGP team, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I think Sundar, it's been awesome talking to you. Thank you for taking the time out to be here with all these students. I'm sure they'll go back a lot more inspired. Okay? One last request. Can we have a selfie with everyone? Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and waiting here, and uh, it's been a great day. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay? All right. I'll just click a few. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Oh, one, one, with, one with these guys as well. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. uh <-huh. laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you Thank so much.